I'm here today with Josiah McKenzie. He is the publisher of HotelOperations.com. How are you doing today, Josiah? Good. Thanks for having me on. Good to see you. You as well. You as well. I'm excited to have you today because, uh, you know, we do a, a lot of operators and, and, you know, today I get to talk to you who, uh, you know, you've got your, you've got your site. And so you're a student of operations. You've got a great background. That's uh, uh, not necessarily traditional in the hospitality sense. And so uh, I'd love to start there and, and kind of hear, you know, kind of your journey of how you got here and then uh, love to dive in and, and learn more about your site. Yeah, absolutely. Chris. So um, my, my journey in hospitality started um, working a, at a very, very small property on the California coast. It was so small that one person had to both check in guests and uh, clean rooms and do a little bit of social marketing and uh, also serve as a part-time barista and occasional tour guide to lost uh, people that would be driving up and down the coast. So there's a lot of hats, a lot of a huge learning experience, uh, had a ton of fun, fell in love with the industry that way. Um, these are kind of early days of, of Twitter and I, there were hospitality businesses were thinking about how do we use that to engage our guests, to promote our business, uh, you know, TripAdvisor and review sites like that were also emerging. And so I started a uh, blog called Hotel Marketing Strategies that was telling the stories of the hotel businesses that were trying to figure this out. Um, so brave new world instead of, you know, getting a, uh, maybe a not so great, uh, guest survey and just throwing it in the trash can that just lived up there uh, for everyone to see. And so you have to actually really take care of your guests. You had to provide a great experience. Um, and so uh, that led to, to me running this marketing blog. Um, and one thing led to another, I ended up working at a company um, that is that does guest experience measurement and, um, and was there for six years, uh, built that business to serve 30,000 hotels around the world with listening to guests, providing hoteliers ways to better engage them. Um, and then I spent a couple of years at a hotel pricing software company. Um, and then the last couple of years at a private equity um, investment technology. So I got to see the hospitality industry from many different perspectives, marketing, revenue, investment, um, and operations. And one of the big learnings through each of those experiences is the role of operations really underpinning all of that, right? It's what drives successful hotel businesses in operations in the broadest sense. So thinking about the way that you attract and retain the right people in your business, the way that you, those people and you inspire them to lead them, to empower them, to deliver great experiences. We think about technology that underpins all of that, but that's what creates raving fans, gets people coming back, gets people telling their friends that they should stay at your hotel. That gives you extra pricing power, right? And then um, depending on where you are in the ecosystem, it's also a huge way to unlock value for investment, right? And so, uh, you know, whether you're a brand or you're a management company trying to win contracts from owners, basically, if you can crush it in operations, you're going to do so well in your business. And so that led to me starting hoteloperations.com. It's a series of case studies and research that's just focused on this. And it's been a lot of fun. That's awesome. As an operator, that's music to my ears, right? You know, you just, you just made me happy knowing that everything I did uh, for the last 20, 25 years actually made a difference, uh, uh, you know, to the investors and the value of the organization. So that's absolutely awesome, man. Great. Well, congratulations. So, uh, so hoteloperations.com, uh, you know, you said focused on research, focused on case studies. What kind of things are you focused on there? Yeah. So um, I try to dig deep into the uh, topics that are top of mind for people collectively in the industry. Um, and, you know, probably unsurprisingly, but over the past, you know, couple of years coming out of COVID, there's a ton of focus on how do we attract and retain talented people? How do we run our businesses? The, the good thing is that there's more demand than in recent history in terms of people wanting to travel, right? So you have a lot of this demand that sort of creates some new problems though, in terms of how do you service that demand? And a lot of those people are paying a lot of money to stay at your hotel. And so how can you create a good enough experience so that you don't burn those relationships and your business suffers in the long term? So um, I would say, you know, there, there's a lot of things, everything from uh, people to uh, organizational leadership, um, guest experience design. Technology is a recurring theme, though. Um, in hospitality, if you look at a lot of analysis from um, different uh, firms like McKinsey, and they look at technology adoption across various industries, Hospitality is often a laggard um, in that as compared to other uh, industries. And um, there's a lot of factors that, that cause that, but technology also presents a really unique opportunity for hotels today 
to uh, distinguish themselves from the, their competitors, you know, to attract guests, to attract the best people, um, to grow the, the value of the real estate or their business. And so um, that's a, a pretty broadly understood uh, belief that technology can help you. The, the thing that I wanted to know more about, though, you know, going back to my 12 years working at technology companies serving tens of thousands of hotels around the world, there's this observation that there's actually a really big difference between um, the hotel companies that use technology, even the same technology, and the results they get out of it, right? So um, I think it was driven by my own curiosity, wanting to try to figure this out. What are the top performers doing that's different? Um, but then also, you know, if you're uh, running a hotel or, or a brand executive or so, someone at a management company, you may have the opportunity to select which technology provider in a certain category. And so I wanted to try to understand that a little bit more in terms of how should I think about shopping for technology? And so uh, having been a provider for so long and now being um, sort of an independent voice, um, I wanted to take advantage of that neutrality and try to dig into kind of what are, um, what are the, the best companies doing in, in each of those areas. Awesome. Awesome. You know, uh, you did a great job. I, I've got an article here that we're going to attach the show notes to you, right? But, uh, you know, the, titled Technology Helps Hoteliers Overall, But Significant Challenges Remain. And I think you kind of just spoke to that point, right? Which is, uh, you know, technology is out there, but hotel, uh, hospitality in particular, it's always been a little bit lagging in, in, in adopting the, the technology. And I think when you think about the, you know, practical application or, or practical integration of technology, uh, you know, there's always the random things, right? Like, uh, you know, API connections or, you know, just being able to, to have it talk to what you already have. Right. And, and I think that that's always been a, a huge, uh, a huge impediment. Whenever people think about uh, adoption rate on technology in, 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 in hospitality, that's one of the things that, that always comes top of mind, but it seems like uh, in your, in your article here, there's a couple of things that you point out. And, you know, one is maybe the gap between, uh, efficiency and effectiveness, right? So, uh, you know, I think in your survey here, um, you know, you have uh, makes you more efficient. More than eighty percent of the people think it makes you, uh, uh, technology makes you more efficient. Uh, where only it looks like about a little over fifty percent make you uh, uh, think it actually makes you more effective. Well, where do you think that gap comes from, right there? It, it's a great question, and I wanted to try to understand it because it's two different things, right? So you could do you could do something that's maybe not super effective just faster. You could just do a lot of it, right? Um, in some parts of hospitality, you, you sort of need to, right? So you need to check in guests and uh, do that in a uh, welcoming, hospitable way, but keep it quick, keep it snappy, right? Um, I think as you go up in uh, seniority within a, a company or you're working, let's say for a management company that obsesses around operations, doing the right things is really important, right? Informing everything from your brand standards to um, how you train your teams and things like that. Um, what I found when I kind of cut the, the data and was looking actually at the responses from management companies, for example, they were saying technology was help them, able to help them a little bit more um, become more effective and choose the right things to do. So I think this is a big opportunity in technology to become a little bit more insightful around what could we be doing that's different or where do we focus our time, attention, resources, things like that. But um, I, I think my observation, going back to your question of, of you know, kind of why, why are people saying it's making them more efficient, um, partially due to the investment that has been made by uh, hotel groups and by technology providers to make technology adoption a little bit easier. And I think to what you were saying earlier, um, this should be the goal of everyone in this ecosystem is to make it as easy as possible, right? So technology is almost like this invisible behind the scenes thing that allows you to do what you can do best and optimizes for that human interaction that would makes hospitality such a uh, compelling business. Absolutely. And, and I'm glad that's where you went because uh, you know, when you think about your role, as you mentioned earlier, about being kind of like neutral in the in the program now, right? You're not uh, you're not the do it all guy at the front desk at a hotel anymore. You know, you're not selling technology anymore. You're not uh, speaking from the investor's point of view anymore. You know, you're kind of in that middle space right now, and you're looking around. You know, uh, let's look at it kind of like in the flow down, right? If you are at the technology developers phase, right? You know, those guys are absolutely selling to uh, uh, hotel groups. They're absolutely selling to restaurant groups, uh, really corporate entities when they're trying to get adoption of their product, right? 
you know, if you're if you're on that side of uh, of things, what do you kind of what 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 things are you looking for to be able to drive adoption at that level that you think would trickle down to those people down at the front desk? Yeah, it's a great question. So the if if I'm a technology provider, what uh, I should be thinking about is um, uh, really kind of who are the people I'm looking to serve and how do I understand them as deeply as possible. Um, I've talked to a number of hoteliers around this and there is often frustration around technology providers just saying, hey, here's um, the way that things should be. And they don't understand the operational realities of if I buy a new technology, I'm actually just spreading that workload among people who have more than full-time jobs already and don't understand kind of the effort that it takes to implement and adopt technology. And so I think part of that is hiring people who have worked in uh, hotels or hotel companies like yourself and hiring more of those type of folks where you understand it from having done it yourself. But even if you don't have that experience, I think there's also opportunity to maybe shadow uh, clients or, or uh, prospective people that you're looking to help and think about kind of what is the job to be done here? What is their day-to-day -day reality look like? And that really develops more empathy as a technology provider. And it will help you become more successful because you'll be solving problems in a way that the end users will, um, will benefit from. The reality is you know, most technology is software as a service now, right? And so it's not just about signing a contract and uh, if you can just kind of like say the right things and wine and dine them and get them in a good mood and ink on the paper and it's a done deal. It's not about that, right? They actually have to succeed with the product. And so there's this whole um, body of, of kind of work in most technology companies around customer success and how do you help them succeed with that? And so it's the same workflow. It's how do you understand, you know, not only what does their day-to-day -day look like, but, you know, once you start getting customers, understanding what are the highest performing ones doing that you can maybe take some of those best practices and help others with. That's awesome. So I think, you know, it's definitely that deep understanding of what the end user is going to be doing, right? And being able to not only speak to the owners of the, of the you know, the, the really the purchasers, right? Uh, you know, the people with the buying power, but also helping them understand exactly what's going to be down, uh, uh, you know, from an adoption perspective when they try to roll this out, right? So if you're on the, if you're on the developer side, you know, you're looking for that adoption. You know, if I'm looking at the other side, right? And if I look from the bottom up, uh, you know, you, you mentioned recruitment, right? Earlier when we were talking and, and technology's role in recruitment, you know, one of the things that always stuck out to me whenever I recruit and I brought somebody into a front desk was they would come back and they would look at our technology and they'd be like, what? Like, seriously? Like that's, that's what we're using to talk, you know, to, to do stuff now. And, and so I've got to wonder if I'm a, a, uh, if I'm an owner, if I'm a, a even a high-end operator or whatever, uh, you know, does adoption of technology play a part in recruitment from a, you know, from a pre, you know, purely uh, operating perspective? Do you think that there's, do you think there's some value there? It, there, there seems to be. Um, the respondents in my most recent study, about three quarters of them say uh, technology makes their staff happier. Um, they're able to hit their, their goals. Um and it was a little mixed. About half of them said technology actually helps them recruit more. I think um, if I think specifically about companies I've spoken with recently, I think part of that is thinking what are the stressors or parts of the job that um, that you know make people hesitant to work in hospitality, right? And what elements of that might be automated away or um, just made more enjoyable. Um, and so I, I think from, you know, from a frontline perspective that there's the opportunity there, um, but the opportunity really, you know, scales up from there, you know, on the brand level, these were actually the people that said, um, great technology actually helped, helped them attract staff even more. Right. And so, um, I think on the initial kind of attracting people into the business, there's, there's the opportunity there. And then there's the opportunity for, um, you know, kind of people in the business today, um, you know, again, high levels of happiness from hotel staff. Um, but I, I've kind of heard, I was talking to Atlas Hotels, which is a, a group of hotels in the UK a little while back, built uh, training into you know, like the point of sale system. And so someone brand new on the job, they have these tutorials and they can instantly pour the perfect drink. And um, so it becomes, again, it's all about like taking away the, the friction or the things holding them back. And um, I think this is a a big opportunity. Um, and I think anyone running a hotel needs to be aware of the other 
uh, places that people could work. And, you know, whether it's an Amazon or, you know, pick, pick your company, those companies are spending so much money on uh, empowering their teams with technology, right? And so just to be competitive, you need to be doing this. But I'm hearing both on a more kind of market level research, but then anecdotally talking to hotel groups, they are seeing benefits from attracting and retaining great talent. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the name of the game right now, right? Is, is attracting great talent and, and, and not only attracting, but obviously making sure it sticks, um, you know? And so that's great that, and, and, you know, when you think about all the, the, the topics that get brought up, right. You know, people talk about flexible work and, and you know, pay and, and all of the different things that are big name topics. But I think this is one of those sneaky ones that's hiding underneath there, right. Is, you know, how comfortable are people when they come to work for you, not only with the team around you, the culture of your building, you know, the benefits that you're providing them, the pay, but then with the tools they have to actually do their job every day, right? You know, is it an old antiquated system that they are having trouble wrapping their heads around or, you know, have you become modern? Are you listening to, you know, what your team is saying, what the, what the, even, I mean, let's face it, all the, all the research is coming from the people who are building this stuff, right? You know, are you listening to what they're saying uh, when it comes down? So, you know, from your seat, when you're looking kind of neutrally at all of this, you know, do you think hotels and, and, and hospitality organizations are keeping up with this? Um, or, or do you feel like there's still a, a pretty big lag, uh, you know, as people are trying to, to develop that adoption? I'm seeing sort of a fork in the road. So there's some hotels that are doubling down on investments here and they're pulling away from the rest at a very rapid clip. And then there's ones that are staying with the status quo, seeing how things shake out and uh, they're underperforming. And I think that gap is going to widen dramatically in the years ahead. Um, I think for a long time, it's been okay to kind of just wait it out and kind of see where things go, but the world is changing extremely quickly. And every month that goes by that you're just seeing what happens um, is a month that your competition is investing in this. They're building the culture, they're building the capabilities, they're attracting the, the top tier talent. Um, those people are hiring people and they're building this flywheel that is gonna be harder and harder to catch up on. Um, and so uh, I, I, I think more than ever before, we're, we're really at a, a fork in the road here with regards to technology. Well, that's really interesting. So if I'm, a, if I'm an owner, right? And, and I'm, I'm listening to this conversation and I'm, and I'm hearing, you know, technology and, and, you know, it's used in recruiting and it's used in adoption and it's used in, in obviously the, the, the guest experience, the customer experience, uh, you know, what kind of technologies are making a difference these days? Uh, you know, have, have you heard of anything in particular that is, you know, kind of moving the needle or, or when you were doing your surveys, your studies, you know, that people are excited about talking about? Yeah. I mean, I, I think, um, if I think back to like the recent NYU investment conference, there's a lot of owners and brands there um, talking about how revenue management technology uh, provides uh, a distinct advantage for owners relative to other types of real estate investment. Um, it's an inflation hedge because you can reprice daily and you can take advantage of quickly changing demand to maximize revenue. So um, that's one of the more obvious ones. I think one of the, the, the broad category that I'm looking a lot at is various operational technologies. And it spans the gamut, everything from a property management system to guest experience uh, software to staff management and engagement software um, that sometimes is a little bit less of a direct line to revenue. But if you look at it holistically, it's about providing that great experience that, um, again, people talk about and tell their friends, which creates demand and uh, creates pricing power ultimately. And this was the big breakthrough for me when I was working at uh, Review Pro, this guest um, experience management company. And I was um, talking with our, our customers. They were actually able to establish this relationship between higher guest uh, satisfaction ratings and their ability to charge more. So their hotels would actually move to different comp sets in their revenue strategy because they were providing an experience that was actually very much different than it used to be. And so that sort of pricing power, it's like, it's good to take advantage of, um, you know, big data and machine learning for smart pricing today. But I think you need to actually take a step back and look, okay, what's going to give me the ability to charge those premium rates. And that's a very holistic view, but, um, but very important. Yeah, no, especially coming out of the pandemic. I mean, that is spot on as far as 
uh, you know, as far as an insight goes, because I mean, the value proposition is, is what everybody's talking about, right? You know, it's, uh, you may, you know, your brand may have something, your, your location, you know, may have had something prior to COVID, but I mean, coming out of the pandemic, everybody is looking at where they're positioned, you know, down to, you know, will they have Q-tips back in the room all the way up to, you know, what is our, our restaurant strategy? You know, do we, do we still run with the ghost kitchens? Do we, you know, there, there's all kinds of crazy strategies that are out there right now that have, uh, you know, that have come out of the post pandemic, uh, era. And I think it all boils back down to, you know, positioning, value proposition, and, and of course, adoption on, on a lot of that. So that that is absolutely phenomenal insight. I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, I mean just to, to riff off of what you're saying there around the positioning, it, it's not every hotel needs to be a, you know, super hip lifestyle brand. And I mean, those have seen tremendous success. But um, two days ago, I was at a, uh, a comfort inn at the airport. And I was just there to crash for the night and, and leave. So very basic hotel. Um, but the, the, the service the staff provided, you know, for that type of property, I felt welcomed. They, they kind of were, were providing service that was more than I expected. And so the gap between my expectation for that experience and what experience I actually had was larger than actually, uh, I've had at many luxury brands. Right. And so that gap is, you want to try to think, how do you improve that or increase that gap, right. Um, between what people expect and what they actually get, because that's what, creates those raving fans. That's what's going to prompt me to go to TripAdvisor or some other review site and share my experience. Um, and so it, that's, of course, a people and a training and a leadership thing. Um, but it's also a, um, a strategy as you think about kind of operational processes. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's it, it's funny the little decisions that businesses make, uh, you know, and and how it can make a huge impact, right? I mean, I was in uh, I was in Austin, Texas uh, a few weeks ago for, for a conference. And we stayed at two hotels uh, during that because one that we booked, uh, we booked late. So it was the option that we had. And then uh, uh, it, it was not great from an experience perspective. So we found another one, right? Uh, but we uh, we had Uber a lot while we were there, right? You know, conference, hotel, restaurants, you know, clients, everything like that. And first hotel we stayed at takes us forever to get an Uber, which is weird in Austin, right? Because there's, there's a million of them there. Uh, the other hotel that we stayed at I, I swear it took less than 60 seconds to get an Uber every single time. And so finally on the last one, right, we're getting ready to go to the airport at this point in time. And we ask them, okay, what's the deal with everybody just showing up here? And they're like, oh, everybody loves this hotel. This is the only hotel in the city where they'll let Uber drivers just come in and go to the bathroom. Okay, get it. Well, I watched a conference of like 3,000 people clear out in probably about 20 minutes. And it's because the Uber drivers are like circling this place, just waiting for stuff. It was absolutely insane. And so you talk about, uh, you know, obviously they're not involved in the Uber technology, uh, you know, at that hotel, but they leveraged the heck out of, out of an old idea and made it fresh again. And let me tell you, the staff was happy. All the Uber drivers were happy. All of the guests were happy. And, and it was just one little small decision like that that changed, you know, kind of everybody's perception. So it doesn't have to be huge decisions. It doesn't have to be huge things. Little things like that make a massive difference. I think it's a fantastic story. And, and what I take away from that is the importance of maybe, you know, every now and then getting out of the office, open your eyes, open your ears, listen, what's happening here. Um, and I think we can all benefit from um, just observing, right? What's going on, what's going on in the culture, what's going on with our guests, what's going on in my neighborhood, my block, um, and how do I how do I solve problems, right? Regardless of where you are, um, that's that's how you come up with creative solutions. Absolutely. And, and I think you do a great job on, on your site with, you know, really giving different perspectives on a lot of, you know, we've talked heavily about technology here, you know, uh, you know, looking at, at your survey and, and, and the results in this, in this one particular article, you got a great, a lot of great articles on there. And I hope everybody gets this site and, and gets a chance to, uh, you know, kind of look at that different perspective on a lot of the different aspects of the operation. Because I think, like you said, you know, if you get out and you observe, uh, you know, you put some science to it, you, you, you do the research, you're going to find some really interesting things. And, and if you can't do the research yourself, there's always somebody who's going to be able to help you do that, uh, you know, which, which I think obviously produces huge insights. Yeah, totally. And, and I think it just comes back to listening. You know, that's, uh, that's actually one thing that I, I, I found in, in this technology uh, research I was doing is that hoteliers want to learn about technology, but they want to learn about it from their peers, right? And they want to kind of figure out what's working for you. Um, case studies were the number one type of uh, content that people wanted um, to, to, to learn about technology. 
And um, I think the reality is, is technology today isn't just like a one size you know, fits all. It's not just invest in technology and you're gonna be fine. There's actually a really big gap between companies uh, that are gonna help you succeed with their technology, with the teams that they have around that are gonna help you implement that. Um, and you know, talking to a salesperson, you're, you're probably gonna hear a great story about the company. You gotta to talk to customers, talk to your peers, um, figure out kind of what's working for you, get the, get the real story. Um, because the reality is there are technology providers out there that provide a material competitive advantage for you. Uh, and there's ones that are going to bog you down with a ton of costs and uh, wasted time and implementation. And so, you know, really do your homework here, uh, have extensive conversations with um, potential technology partners, but with your peers in the industry. And, and that's what I'm trying to do on hotelOperations.com is, is, you know, more case studies of you know, what's working for people. But uh, I think anyone listening to that can just benefit from talking to, to others in the business. Awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, you know, where I always like to end things here uh, with our calls or, or with our conversations here is to really talk about, uh, you know, kind of what's next, right? So uh, is, is, you know, you're kind of venturing out and, and, and you're in your own space right now. Do you have any, uh, do you have any advice for any of those people that are coming into the industry right now? And, and if so, you know, what does that look like? Yeah. So hospitality today has in a more potential than any other um, industry that, that I'm aware of. I think there's a chance to leverage some of the technology that we've been talking about um, and in many regards kind of step into a wide open space where if you look at the economic activity that's driven by hospitality, it's massive. It's a huge business. So many people involved. It affects so many different areas. Um, and so th there's kind of an opportunity to make a big difference here. I think, you know, a fair amount is talked about on hospitality on a personal level. That's what got me into the business. I think it there's a sense of taking care of other people that I don't want to discount. That is so valuable and so meaningful on a personal level for them, for you. Um, but from uh, you know other aspects of this, I think the amount of money at stake is incredible. The number of people that are involved in this business is incredible. Um, and there are opportunities across the spectrum, whether you work in finance or technology or people to bring world-class operating practices to hospitality businesses and help them thrive. Reality today is, is demand is very high for hotels in a world where there's a lot of uncertainty of what's going on. There's uh, a lot of demand for hotels. I expect that to only increase. Everyone from STR to um, bankers and investment firms have been talking about the years ahead being very bright, um, but that's not gonna be the case for every hotel. It's really up to you know people to seize the moment, take advantage of some of the opportunities we have to operate more effectively, but overall, um, there is more opportunity in hospitality than there ever has been. I love it. And you are a hundred percent correct. So, I mean, you know, look at your career, right? I mean, you look where you started. And, and I think when you were probably, you know, the Jack of all trades, uh, you know, back at a front desk, you probably never saw yourself sitting exactly here. Uh, and I think that's a pretty common story with people in the industry, right? It's not just, it's just not a linear approach to the industry anymore. It's yeah. definitely a, a holistic industry. I love it. I absolutely love it. Well, uh, you know, Josiah, if people want to uh, find out more about you, want to find out more about hotelOperations.com, I mean, obviously they're going to hotelOperations.com. Uh, where are they going to connect with you? Yeah, find me on LinkedIn. I love LinkedIn. Have some great conversations there. So would love to connect with anyone hearing this and help out where I can. Awesome. Well, that's great. I know that uh, everybody who's listened to this uh, uh, episode is definitely going to hop over to hoteloperations.com, you know, check out the case studies, read a little bit more about this technology article. Again, we're going to have this in the show notes just to make sure that, uh, you know, everybody can find it pretty easily. But uh, other than that, Josiah, thank you very much for your time today. And I look forward to connecting you in the future. This is fun, Chris. Thanks. Talk soon. See ya.